Watch you guys, got another video here for you. So you're getting no signal on your monitor. Everything is plugged in. The weird thing you might be thinking is the PC is on and it's running. This is another common problem, probably one of the most common problems you're gonna face when building PCs or fixing PCs where you just get a dead screen, nothing comes on. Sometimes the PC may be dead, uh, but basically what's happened here, we've got a complete running system Everything is working okay. All the cables are plugged in to the right areas and yet the fans are spinning and you get no display. So let's go ahead and what we're gonna do is diagnose this PC. Now this is a used motherboard off of eBay. And uh, you know, I don't normally buy used parts off of eBay like that because of that reason because you just got no way of testing it without bringing it to your home first and then plugging it all in and again you trust in the seller to uh, tell you that it's working okay and tested no screenshot of the bios screen there basically so i bought this blind and just believe in his words so i've got it all working as you can see and now this is what we're left with so what does it come down to is it a ram issue or is it a power supply issue? Is it a graphics card issue? This is a used graphics card as well. I've tested this, I know it works, but I'm gonna show you the procedure, what you wanna to do to quickly resolve this problem. So let's move on to the first thing we're gonna test. So I'm gonna power down the computer here. Just let it power down, there we go. Now, the first thing we want to look for is the cable itself. So this is using a DP cable, DisplayPort cable. Now, if you've got another cable you can use, then definitely swap that cable out, just in case the cable is bad. So let me have a little quick look down here. So I've got a HDMI cable here, I've plugged into the monitor now, and basically what I'm gonna do is quickly test this cable to see whether this is gonna work for me. So let me just go ahead and plug this in. Get it in the right way, there we go. And we can power it on again. So let's power this on, and we'll see if we get display. So we're using a different cable this time. Okay, so we're getting no display so now we know it's not the cable. So let's move on to quickly testing the monitor. Now I know this monitor is good, but at home for you people that are trying to diagnose your computer problems, maybe it's a new PC build or an old one like this, then you wanna test, test that monitor. You can plug it into your TV just to see if you get a display. So I'm gonna get something and quickly show you that the monitor is working. So you can definitely see how to test that. So I've got a mini PC here, got it plugged into the monitor. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna plug this into the back of the monitor here. So that will go into the monitor and we'll power that on and see whether that works. Okay, so let's power on the mini PC. Now you can use an Android TV box, a Roku box, or whatever it is you want to try and get to display. And there you go, it's working. So we know the monitor's fine. And now we know, but it's not the monitor. Okay, so what's the next thing we're gonna do? Quickly test the memory. Now you wanna either go down to one stick of memory. If you've got more than two sticks and you've got four sticks, just go down to one stick of memory. Better still, get yourself some other memory and test. Now, if you've bought a brand new system, the memory could be faulty. So you definitely wanna test another sticker of RAM in there just to make sure. Now, if it's an old PC, sometimes these can get a little bit of build up on here, on this gold strip here, you wanna get a, a rubber here and just clean these terminals. Sometimes clean out the terminal inside here as well. So I'm just gonna remove both of these sticks here because I don't want to use those sticks. I wanna make sure that it's 
not the memory at all. So I'm just going to go straight in with another stick of memory. And that way we can test whether it's a memory problem And of course, we're just going to power that back on. No signal straight away. So it's not the memory. So now we know it's not the memory and we can move on to the next thing. We'll do the GPU next. And that's what we'll do next. So we'll check, check the GPU because it might be a GPU problem. That's the thing because we're not getting no display and GPU gives you display. So it's possibly a GPU problem. So we'll test that next. Yeah, I've got this GPU lying around here, takes no power this, so this would be a great candidate for testing. So I'm just going to put this in here. And what we're going to do is going to plug this in. Make sure that's in. I'm not going to bother screwing it in here, so we're just going to quickly test. Oh, it would help if I put the cable in. So we've got a graphics card in, got the cable in, and we're going straight to the monitor. And again, no signal. So we know it's not the GPU, so the GPU is fine. We know the monitor's fine, we know the cables are fine, we know the RAM is fine. I know the CPU is good because I took it out of a machine that was working the day that I took it out of there. Now the problem you may have is if the CPU is brand new, you wouldn't know whether it's a CPU problem. So you need to uh, find out whether that is a CPU problem. Now, just quickly jumping back to the GPU. If you don't have a spare GPU, there might be an onboard uh, GPU here that you can use for the CPU and then try that and plug this into the onboard here and see whether that works. Also make sure, uh, just to make sure that that's working okay if you don't have a spare uh, GPU lying around. I'm just gonna pull this out. Now also here, you'll have a battery inside here, especially if it's an older, an older system. If it's an older system, you want to make sure that the CMOS battery is a good battery and change it. Because if it's an old motherboard like this, the battery could be dead or could be dying. So I've got another battery here. So I'm just gonna quickly put this one in. Also, I can see a jumper switch here, which is for the clear CMOS. You wanna make sure that you clear CMOS. So you wanna take the power lead out and we've got a new battery in there. We're gonna clear the CMOS here. So I'm just gonna put the jumper pin onto clear there's a little jumper pin. Now yours may be in a different area on the board, but that's where we're at now. So what I'm gonna do is quickly plug in the GPU. I'm gonna use the small one here for quickness because it means I don't have to put power to it. And these are great for testing, having a cheap, power, a cheap graphics card for testing. It's a really quick and easy way of testing stuff. So now we've got that back up and running, we can now power on, put some power to it. Now remember, we've cleared the CMOS, so we've got a new battery in there and we're still getting no signal. So, okay, so we now know that's not the case. So we're gonna turn this off and power supply is always an issue. Sometimes you can get a bad power from a bad power supply. So we can quickly test that with a power supply. I know this power supply is good, but you can, um, test that and I would advise you to test that as well. Now also the slot here, you can see the slot that we've got the graphics card plugged into. This slot could be bad on the board. And if you've got another slot, you can try another slot here to plug the card into. Um, with this type of machine as well, because it's old, that slot could be bad and that's what might be causing the problem. So we're getting down to the last few things now. Also, you might want to unplug all of your hard drive and stuff like that, and just to see whether there's any issues there, and just get back to real basics and see. Check all your 
connections here as well. Make sure they're fully plugged in and they're not loose and they're not half out because if they're half out, they're not going to work properly. You need to make sure they're fully pushed home. And uh, basically I've done that. I've also made sure your CPU power is in here, that's in, and I've changed that cable around. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pull this out and get down uh, to the power supply so we can test the power supply. So as you can see here, I've got a power supply here. I've got it wired into the CPU and for the 24 pin, the RGB won't come on because I haven't got the adapter plugged in at the back, but that doesn't matter. All I'm interested in is getting power to the board and power to the CPU and see whether it powers on. And I've just got to power this on here and we'll see uh, whether that uh, gives us a signal or not. So let's just give it some power. and we've got no signal. So we know the power supply is okay. So we're getting down towards the motherboard or the CPU. Now I know the CPU is good on this, but if you don't know that, then you'll need to determine which one of those is bad. Um, so you've now gotten down to the motherboard. In this case, I know it is the motherboard that is fouled. And this is the problem with buying used parts on eBay this is a 1155 socket motherboard, which makes it probably around about nine years old. And uh, this is the problem that you're gonna have with buying used parts like that. Now I've gotta go through all of the hassle of sending this back, boxing it up, waiting for my money back, and it's just a headache. I've gone ahead and bought the cooler, the case, the graphics card and a load of other stuff for a project for the channel. And of course, what's now happened is I've ended up with a load of parts that I've got no use for, memory, extra memory, and now I've got to send that back. So, and I'm gonna to have to try and either find a new or used, another used 1155 socket motherboard or just completely tank the uh, project that I was gonna do, which is probably gonna be the case because this is too old and I never normally do it it's just the fact that I was trying to help someone out with a cheap build and uh, it just ended up coming back and biting me in the end with this uh, dodgy board here. So just for the video purpose here, I've removed the motherboard out of the case just in case there was some sort of grounding issue or something like that. And you can see here, I've got it plugged into the bench on the uh, bench here. I've changed the slot for the GPU. It's in that secondary slot here. Um, I've also give it some power and you can see we're still getting no signal here. So it's definitely that motherboard that is fouled. Now, of course, a word of caution here, don't use cheap power supplies like this one. This is just one I had on the floor here. It's a rubbish power supply. So we don't be using anything like that. Um, I don't even use it for testing. It's just that I've literally got no more power supplies left and this was the only thing that I had to hand, but I know it's good, but it's just not sufficient enough for uh, quality use, as you can see here, for the quality of cabling and stuff like that. But it's good enough for testing what we've got here. Now I've took the heat sink off here, and I'm just gonna quickly test to see whether this CPU actually gets hot, uh, if this CPU starts to warm up as soon as I power it on. As soon as it does, I can power this off. It's gonna shut down anyway if it was left on for far too long but wait till the power comes on the power's now on and the cpu is cold it's not getting hot at all so it's probably this socket that's uh, bad uh, for the actual cpu itself there's not not even no heat here's lukewarm a little bit of heat coming now not much but a little bit of heat coming there. But you shouldn't be able to touch that. It'll get really, really hot. And uh, it tells me this motherboard is bad. I know the CPU is good because I've tested the CPU in uh, the board that it come out of and it was working fine. So I know that's fine. And uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna replace that board. So just to finish off here, well, you can see I've got this CPU in the Dell motherboard again one sticker RAM and also got the GPU in here. 
uh, put a bit of power to it and you can see we've got display on the screen right there now that tells me that the cpu is working perfectly fine and the foxconn motherboard was dead on arrival now also what that means to tell me is the motherboard is bad and for those people that make videos and say it's just the connectors on here and clean the connector on the back of the cable these videos are not much use here you need to do a full troubleshooting diagnostic uh, process on the pc to make sure you know exactly what it is it doesn't take long just check each component and uh, tick it off when you know the ram is good and so on and so on and so on right the way through and then you'll get to the problem and uh, the problem was the actual foxconn motherboard was dead on arrival which will be getting sent back anyway i think that's going to be about it for this video i hope this one's been useful to you my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk thanks again for watching guys if you enjoyed the video then give it a thumbs up it really does help with the youtube algorithm and also hit that subscribe button and leave a comment down below uh, whether you like this type of content if you don't then i won't make it anymore but basically i just need to know what you guys like to enjoy to watch so i can make that content for you anyway have a great day thanks again bye for now now if you haven't subscribed yet hit the red subscribe button and then hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos